I'm sorry that I can't participate in the fall's UCO Mat Mat Tech Forum. Its themes of driving innovation, improving people's ac active lives, make systems more efficient to drive economic growth. These are all priorities of the digital agenda for Europe, for which I am responsible. Throughout history, new technology has brought about revolutions in medical practice. New ideas may develop unexpectedly, but then become such an integral part of the medical canon that it becomes hard to think of life without them. From aspirin to x-rays, now we have available an amazing new promise information and communications technology whose creative uses are many whose potential still largely untapped. I myself, I'm just back from Kenya, a country with health challenges surpassing our own, a country plagued by malaria, HIV and poor living conditions, a country of 43 million people and just 6,000 doctors. In that country, I've seen the immense power of new technology to overcome those significant challenges, computers and even mobile phones being used to help people find prescriptions, remind them to take their medication and train rural nurses. And in that country, I've met the entrepreneurs who are developing those solutions, helping society and creating sustainable business models. Here in Europe, we all know the challenges for healthcare in a progressively aging society. And I'm convinced that technology can help here, just as it does in Africa. We must ensure first that techno technological solutions are developed and second, that those solutions are used. Because too often there is a gap between technical capability and actual practice. Reasons for this gap vary. Sometimes solutions are not deployed because of cost, sometimes because of legal issues, sometimes because of the inertia caused by ingrained cultures, habits or business models and sometimes because we do not understand user needs well enough to address them. If we don't act, this gap will widen and access to quality care will become more unequal. We want to get the most out of technology and innovation to help member states address the challenges in health and social care systems. So we need to carefully listen to your views. How do we improve efficiency and productivity of health systems? How do we raise awareness of solutions? What are the opportunities and barriers? Most importantly, how do we come to understand fully the needs and problems of end users, whether patients, the elderly, care providers or practitioners? For this reason, we have created a forum to pull together the main actors, the European Innovation Partnership on Active and Healthy Aging, which Commissioner Dali spoke to you about yesterday. And I would like to underline two points. First, the partnership is a key to unlock Europe's innovation potential, not by new money, as this is not the major problem, but by addressing barriers, ensuring that systems are interoperable, that efforts are not duplicated, and that we have cooperation between different health and social care sectors, public and private. And second, the EIP, as a pilot, is still fragile. It depends fully on the will to make change happen. And I encourage you to join Commissioners Daly, Gagan Quinn and myself and take up this challenge. The partnership is an excellent chance to work together with a wide variety of stakeholders towards new viable solutions. Let's not miss this opportunity. And I often say that the best thing about the ICT sector is not what it has achieved, it is what it has the potential to achieve. It is an open field waiting for new ideas, new seeds to be planted. And I'm convinced that in the health and social care sector, the harvest will be rich, the sector transformed and the potential rewards, social and economic significant. I wish you fruitful discussions and a successful conference.